In this lecture, we are going to talk about methods for solving nonlinear uh, optimization. So, for nonlinear optimization, we first uh, remind the KKT conditions, which are the uh, KKT first order or necessary optimality conditions, and then discuss. Newton Robson method to solve a set of nonlinear equations. So, uh, before we start this, recall that when we have linear optimization problem, we prefer to use simplex algorithm. But if our problem is not linear, then we have to use other approaches to solve the set of equations which are formulated, which are derived using KKT conditions. So for this function, minimizing f of x, so this is our optimization problem, subject to the equality constraints and the inequality constraints. The first step, we assign Lagrange multipliers to equality and inequality constraints. So this is our problem. The second step, we formulate the Lagrange function. Which is f of x plus the vector of Lagrange multipliers corresponding to equality constraints transpose equality constraints, the same for inequality constraints. And in this third step, what we do, formulate the KKT first order or necessary optimality condition. Which is Gradient of Lagrange function with respect to variables. Lambda transpose equality constraint with respect to variables. New transpose inequality constraints with respect to x. And then we do the same for Lagrange multipliers of equality constraints. It basically gives us the equality constraint, L mu. It gives us the inequality constraints. And then we have this condition, which is diagonal matrix with mu on the diagonal elements multiplied by inequality constraints is equal to zero. You also know that mu are all zero. Now the question that we have, how to solve these nonlinear equations? Okay, now this is the question that we want to ask, and we want to see what are different methods to solve this. In this lecture, as I mentioned, we focus on newton raphson so newton raphson basically works based on the idea of approximating the function with a linear function uh, by using the derivative of your function. So let's start with the one-dimensional case. So we want to say y as a function of x is equal to 0. This is one-dimensional case. And we want to find the solution to this. So first we use the Taylor expansion, the first order one, y as a function of x plus delta x, where delta x is very small, is equal to y as a function of x, so it's the approximation, plus derivative of y with respect to x multiplied by delta x is equal to zero. Based on this, we conclude that delta x is equal to minus yx multiplied by dy dx power minus 1. So this 
So uh, this is a simple update for the scenario that we only have one variable. Let me try to show this using this figure. So let's say this is your y of x. This is y, this is x. We we'll start with some x zero, x sub zero, which has the value of y x sub zero. What we do, we first find the derivative at x zero. This is the value that we have here. And then we approximate the next iteration. We try to uh, find this one. So we do this iteratively. The next point is going to be x1. So what we do in the next step, we are going to find the derivative at this point again. As you can see, as you can see, x2 is closer to the solution that makes y of x is equal to zero. So it's an iterative process that we do until we find an acceptable approximation of our optimal point. In order to clarify this, I'm going to solve an example for one dimensional case. So the example is we want to minimize y, which is x to the power 3 over 3 minus 2x, x. So the first step, we formulate a Lagrange function. The next step, gradient of Lagrange function with respect to x should be 0. So 3 multiplied by 1 over 3 x squared minus 2 is equal to 0 x squared minus two is equal to zero. So this is our nonlinear equation that we want to solve. We define y to be x squared minus two. So we want to find the answer to y of x is equal to zero. First, we calculate derivative of y with respect to x which is 2x. And second, something that we used in the previous, let's go to the previous lecture. So here, what we want to use is dy over dx to power minus one, or derivative of y with respect to x, the inverse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to also find derivative of y with respect to x inverse, which is nothing but one over 2x. So given this, what we can do, we can determine delta x at iteration i, which is equal to minus derivative of y with respect to x inverse, evaluated at x is equal to x i multiplied by value of y evaluated at x y, x i. So given this, I'm going to draw the table for the iterative process. So this is the iteration number, iteration number. This is the value of x. This is the value of y evaluated at x. This is d by with respect to x, derivative of y with respect to x, and this is delta x. So iteration zero, we start with some values for x. So for example, here, I, I choose x to be equal to one. If x is equal to one, what's going to be the value of y? We insert x is equal to one here. So y of one is going to be equal to minus one. And then we evaluate dy over dx, which is nothing by two multiplied by one or two. And then we use this equation to find delta x. So delta x is, minus one over two multiplied by y of x i. So y of one is minus one. This is going to be plus one over two, plus 0.5. In the next iteration, which is iteration one, we know that 
delta x is 0.5 and x0 was 1. So we can conclude that x1 is equal to 1.5. So if we calculate the value of y of x at x1 is 1.5, y of 1.5 is 1.5 power 2 minus 2, which is 2, 25 minus 2. So it's going to be 0.25. So if you can see, the value of our function is getting closer to zero. And then what's the value of, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? It's going to be 3. And finally, what's delta x here? It's minus 0 0.08128. So if you can see, the first delta x that we had was a large number. It was 0.5. But now delta x is minus 0 0.08, which is a very small value. So we can stop here, or we can continue these iterations until we get closer to the optimal solution, which leads to y of x is equal to 0. All right. So this one was the case uh, when we had only one dimensional variables. What if we have two dimensional functions? For example, y1, x1, and x2 is equal to 0. y2, x1, and x2 is equal to 0. In this case, uh, we have to define the Jacobian matrix first. So the definition of Jacobian matrix suppose that you have a function from real values n and dimensional to real values n dimensional is a function such that each of its first order partial derivatives exist on Rn. So the Jacobian matrix of function f. So note that your function could be f1 of x, f2 of x, and so on. So the function itself has multiple components. So the Jacobian matrix, the Jacobian matrix of this function f is an m by n matrix an entry ij of this matrix is partial derivative of the i's function with respect to the j's variable if i want to write the expanded form jacobian matrix is partial derivative of all components of f with respect to x1 all components of f with respect to x2 and all components of f with respect to x sub n. Or we can represent it as transpose of gradient of f1, transpose of gradient, gradient of f2, transpose of gradient of fn. If you want to write this in the expanded form, it's going to be derivative with respect to x1, f2, x1, fm with respect to x1, and then f1 with respect to x sub n, and the last element fm with respect to xn. What I recommend, this is the most straightforward way to remember this definition for Jacobian matrix. So these are Jacobian matrix elements. All right, with having Jacobian matrix definition in mind, let's get started to write the Taylor theorem, the Taylor expansion for our original problem, which is a two-dimensional function. So 
So for the two-dimensional function, we have to define both y sub one, x one plus a minor addition to x one, delta x one, x two plus a minor addition to delta x two. And for y sub two, x one plus delta x one and x two plus delta x sub two. This is equal to, first we evaluate the values at the original points. Then what we add is the Jacobian matrix of x1, x2 multiplied by delta x1, delta x2. So, and we set this to be equal to zero. So what's the uh, Jacobian matrix for uh, to a function that goes from R2 to R2? It's going to be derivative of y1 with respect to x1, y2 with respect to x1, y1 with respect to x2, and y2 with respect to x2. So given these two, what I plan to do I plan to find what uh, the, the iterative process, what's the value of delta x1, delta x2 at each iteration. So it's minus Jacobian of x1, x2 inverse. So this is the inverse of our Jacobian matrix. So we basically bring this to the other side and then we multiply it by Jacobian inverse. Multiply it by y1, x sub 1, x sub 2, y2, x sub 1, x sub 2. So this is the iterative process. What I want to do, I want to somehow compare this with the one dimensional case, right? So this is the two dimensional scenario for Newton Raphson. For the one dimensional, we had delta x i is equal to minus derivative of y with respect to x inverse evaluated at x is equal to x i multiplied by y x sub i. So this is one dimensional Newton Raphson. All right, so, so far we have seen the one-dimensional Newton Raphson, the two-dimensional Newton Raphson. Let's see what's the generic form. The generic form of Newton Raphson for n-dimensional case. So find the solution of y as a function of x is equal to zero, where y and x are both as of dimension n. What does that mean? y1 of x1, x2, xn is equal to zero y2, x1, x2, xn is equal to zero, and yn, x1, x2, xn is equal to zero. In this case, our Jacobian matrix is going to be an n by n matrix. So j i j, which is n by n, and as we defined before, j i j is equal to partial derivative of yi with respect to x sub j. And now that we have this, we use the Taylor theorem. So we have y of x plus delta x. Note that all of these are vectors. Is equal to y x plus derivative of y, derivative of x, delta x is equal to zero. 
and delta x or our update is Jacobian of x inverse evaluated at x is equal to xi, the current iteration multiplied by y of xi. So this is our update. And this is how we find our Jacobian. Now what we want to do, we want to write this in an algorithmic way, like in a step-by-step -step procedure. Newton Robson method. Step one, choose initial values and call them x at iteration zero. So when we have n values for x, this one is going to be x10, x20, xn0. In the second step, determine inverse of Jacobian matrix at xk. So in this case, it's x0. But then as we move forward, k shows the iteration index. So this is iteration 0, then iteration 1, iteration 2, and so on. And we show it as Jacobian of xk inverse. In the third step, we calculate the steps, the changes in the variables at that iteration, which is minus Jacobian evaluated at JK inverse multiplied by our function evaluated at the values of X at the same iteration. In the fourth step, we update variables, update variables using x at, it, at the new iteration is equal to x at the current iteration plus delta x, which is calculated in the previous step at iteration k. So delta x is calculated here. All right, so just uh, to make sure we are on the same page, in the first iteration, we have x1 is equal to the initial values that you said, plus delta x0. In this fifth step, uh, we check the termination criteria. Check if y of x to k plus 1, a at iteration k plus 1, is less than epsilon. What's epsilon? Epsilon is a set of like epsilon 1 to epsilon n. These are very small values that you set. For example, you can set it to 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1. It means your function, how close is your function to the optimal value, to y of x is equal to 0. If this is correct, then stop and consider x at iteration k plus 1 is solution of equation system. This is usually your nonlinear equation system. If not, we go to a step two. What's a step two? Again, we calculate the Jacobian using the variables at the current iteration. Then we calculate delta x. Then we update the variables. And again, we check the termination criteria. So these are the steps for newton raphson method. So in this lecture, we talked about nonlinear set of equations. Then we talked about one-dimensional and two-dimensional Newton Raphson method. And finally, we talked about the generic Newton Raphson method, which is an iterative process 
until we find the optimal solution. What was the update row? Delta X is minus Jacobian of X inverse using the current iteration multiplied by the value, the value of your function evaluated at iteration k. And what's uh, the i's element of Jacobian matrix? The ij's element of Jacobian matrix, f of i, derivative of f of i, or in this case, y of i with respect to x subject. 